Which one of these is a bed bug? This? Or this? How about this? Nope. None of those are bed bugs. Despite the huge hold they have on our psyche, with weekly reports of infestations in cities around the world, we know surprisingly little about them. Paris is so overrun with them that hotels have had to close for weeks. Toronto, New York, and Chicago are also experiencing outbreaks. There have even been reports of bedbugs in public transit. Bedbugs can wreak havoc in your life, feasting on your blood and destroying your ability to sleep in peace. They're experts at catching rides on your clothes and spreading from home to home. And once they're settled somewhere, they can last a month without eating, waiting for the right time to strike. There's a little, little bug hiding right in there. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Today, we're diving deep into the world of one of the scariest nighttime terrors, bed bugs. We have exciting news. We're expanding our store and adding prints of all the art you've seen in our show. We've got incredible designs and products that capture the essence of your favorite animals and our adventures. We have art prints of every animal we've covered on Animal Logic, like this wolverine and this amazing shoebill stork and this coconut crab, the largest land invertebrate on Earth, pretty much life-size. We also have mugs and water bottles with animals from some of your favorite episodes. Ever wanted a coffee cup with all of my cat illustrations? Of course you did. And now you can finally have it. And we've just launched our new line of apparel, from baseball hats to beanies. And we'll be adding new products every month, so you can find the perfect holiday present for all the Animal Logic fans in your life. So head on over to our store, it's right below the video or shop directly on our YouTube channel page. Thanks for supporting Animal Logic, and I hope you enjoy the video. Bedbugs can turn your dreams into nightmares by nibbling on your exposed skin. They're stealthy, hiding in your mattress seams, headboards, and even electrical outlets. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Bedbugs have lived with us throughout human history and spread to every city in the world. Wherever there's humans, there's bedbugs. Their evolution is a bit of a mystery. Scientists used to think that they were general bloodsuckers that became bat blood specialists before eventually jumping to human beings. But the discovery of a 110 million year old bedbug fossil debunked that theory. Bats appeared about 60 million years ago, which means that for at least the first 50 million years of their existence, bedbugs were feeding on currently unknown hosts. It's cool to think that T. rex and other Cretaceous dinos had bedbug issues just like we do today. Unfortunately, bedbugs require animals that return to the same nest every night, which big dinos were unlikely to do. They were likely going for smaller animal blood. Currently, there are two main species, the common bedbug and the tropical bedbug. Since they've evolved to be human parasites, they're comfortable wherever humans live. They have adapted to our regular sleeping habits and large rooms, safe of insect-eating predators. We gave them safe haven and easy access to our blood. You might be wondering, why are they so obsessed with blood? How do you evolve to be a vampire? Bed bugs, of course, are not alone. There are around 15,000 animal species who drink blood, many of which we covered in our Bloodsuckers episode of Second Nature. Some species drink blood in order to survive or reproduce. These animals are exclusively hematophagous. Others do it as a secondary source of nutrition. They practice hematophagy opportunistically. The earliest known vampires are proto-mosquitoes, and they lived about 220 million years ago. Yet not all bloodsuckers trace their roots back to these mosquitoes. Vampirism has evolved separately at least six times in invertebrates. The thing is, blood is super calorie rich and is full of iron, salt, protein, and fat. 
A pint of blood has more calories than a pint of beer. Luckily for the bed bugs, they're always in bulk phase. There are some other nutrients that vampires need that aren't easily available in blood. For these, gut bacteria break down compounds in the blood meals and turn them into absorbable nutrients. Kind of like how cows' gut bacteria turn grass into almost all the nutrients they need. Being a vampire is extremely dangerous, as they're usually parasites to a much larger animal that could easily kill them. In the case of bed bugs, we have the ability to crush them, poison them, steam them, and even wipe out entire colonies in a single day. Bed bugs have to pick the perfect time to come out of their hiding spots to feed. But being insects, they don't really have a profound understanding of our sleeping habits. All they can do is one, identify a source of heat, which is usually a large, warm-blooded animal. Two, detect carbon dioxide to confirm that the warm body is alive and full of blood. And three, sense no movement, which indicates that the coast is clear to bite and extract blood undetected. Then it's chow time. The bedbug looks for exposed skin, inserts its proboscis, and injects a 45-protein saliva cocktail, rich in anticoagulants and numbing agents. This makes blood thinner and easier to slurp up, and makes the host unlikely to notice until it's too late. But then comes the most dangerous part for the bedbug. When it's full of blood, it balloons up and becomes more noticeable, cumbersome, and slow. It's at this stage that they most often get caught and squished. An adult bedbug is about 5 millimeters long and 2 millimeters wide. But after a proper meal, when they drink about six times their weight, they become rotund. This is one of the most dramatic temporary increases of body size in the animal world. Bedbugs are kind of like little hulks. If the hulk was a giant blood-filled water balloon, with all this added weight, their tiny little legs barely keep up, but they can still reach speeds of about 0.07 kilometers an hour. It doesn't seem like much, but relative to body size, they're way faster than you. So no need to dunk on them for their clumsy running. Usually, their colony is only a few meters away from their prey's bed. It only takes a few minutes to return to safety, and if they do, they'll be satisfied for about a week. So this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for any sort of speckling. See, this is all bed bug feces. There's the casing right there. There's an actual bug in there, you can see it. Young bed bugs need a blood meal before every molt. They go through five nymph stages before they're sexually mature, but that doesn't mean they grow slowly. It only takes a couple of months for a pair of bed bugs to turn into a colony of 35,000. Once they become adults, they can survive months without feeding. So old luggage and unused beds can sustain colonies for extended periods of time. They're like the cursed spawn of mosquitoes and ticks, hiding in crevices, feeding on you at night, and using your blood to make babies. So this client tells me she noticed this two weeks ago. Well, she may have noticed them two weeks ago, but she's had them a lot longer than two weeks. See, like they're just friggin' everywhere. A female can lay up to 10 eggs a day, and a total of 500 in a lifetime. It may seem like easy work to drink the blood of sleeping people and lay eggs, but bed bugs have one of the most hardcore mating strategies, the very appropriately named traumatic insemination. Bed bug females have a genital tract that they use to lay eggs, but it's strictly a one-way street. Instead, males stab females in the chest with their sharp, hook-like needle penises. Insects don't have a closed circulatory system like we do. They don't have veins and arteries taking blood to every part of their body. Their hemolymph, which is the insect equivalent of blood, travels more freely around the body. 
So when the male stabs the female, the sperm mixes with the hemolymph and eventually reaches the ovaries to fertilize the eggs. Nobody knows how or why the strategy evolved. The females are passive when it happens, but the wounds can become infected. Multiple males can traumatically inseminate the same female, and some males even inseminate other males. It's a chaotic system, but one that has helped them take over the world. With the bedbug epidemic running rampant in most countries, we have to consider ourselves lucky for one thing. Bedbugs don't give you diseases, as far as we know. Mosquitoes, fleas, and ticks are some of the world's deadliest animals because they can pick up pathogens after biting an infected host and spread them to other hosts. Bedbugs don't transmit malaria or other deadly diseases, but their bites do have negative effects. The anticoagulants and other proteins in their saliva are eventually identified by the immune system and turn into itchy bumps. The more bites you get, the better the immune system becomes at identifying them, and the reaction becomes faster and stronger. For some people, they turn into hives and red rashes, while a lucky 20% of the population never gets any reaction at all. Some of the main issues are related to how we react to them. Scratching them in excess can lead to infections, and the knowledge of the presence of blood-sucking parasites in your bed can lead to anxiety, insomnia, and delusional parasitosis, a mental disorder where you think that there's parasites on you even when there aren't. These effects, combined with their quick reproduction and the fact that they can hitch rides on clothing and luggage, have made them a real problem in big cities. Paris is currently having a crisis with some bedbugs having even been found in public transit. There's a lot of research going into how to deal with these blood-sucking devils in the most efficient and definitive way. In some cases, fumigating your entire home and washing all your clothes and bedding is necessary. It's an expensive and time-consuming battle. Hotels and other businesses affected by bedbugs take a big hit in revenue and reputation. Some devices, like bedbug monitors, help discover infestations at the early stages. Research is ongoing, but companies like the Bedbug Foundation are working on technologies to detect bedbugs based on the bug's behavior and biology. If you do end up getting bedbugs, and I hope you don't, please call an exterminator. There are some things you can do to find them and destroy them, but an exterminator will know exactly where to look and how to deal with them. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>